Okay, so it is a cold Canadian winter's night. It's March now though, so sunny during the day, really freezing at night. I've got the big rig set up tonight, which is the Skywatcher EQ8R Pro and the Esprit 150 refractor. So a big old refractor telescope, big heavy one. Now I can only set up a rig like this on nights when I know that it's gonna be clear pretty much all night long because it's not something I can quickly set up and tear down. And it's a lot of work, so I gotta justify it. So that system currently has the Starlight Express monochrome Trius 694 camera and that just captures just incredible images. And being that it's a, I believe it's like 95% full moon, I think we're one day out from a full moon night tonight, I'm gonna to be shooting in narrow band only. So specifically, I'll probably just grab some HA tonight with that six nanometer astronomic filter. As for targets, I've got the telescope pointed at, uh, if you can see it there, pointed at the bright star Sirius right now, which is a, an awesome star to use for alignment and focusing because it's just so darn bright. Brightest star in the whole sky. So I'm gonna keep the scope kind of pointed in that direction because it is so long. When it slews around, those cables really, there's such a good, like you really have to watch it to make sure it's not running into anything, cables aren't snagging, because it's just a full swing of a big long telescope. So I'm gonna keep the telescope in that direction and probably try Thor's helmet in H-Alpha because uh, I've only shot that one before using the RASA at 400 millimeter. So uh, not ideal focal length for that target because it's not that large, but I think this should be perfect. Here's a look at the uh, Esprit 150 here, uh, pointed at Sirius, so that drastic angle, you know, that's kind of what it looks like from this latitude at 43 degrees north. Orion doesn't get too high. And this is what I'm saying about the length of the scope and the wires draping around. Obviously some cable management needs to be done and you guys always love to give me a hard time in the comments about that. For now, things are just gonna be messy and that's just the way it is. There's also some challenges uh, involved in filming out here that uh, I've been thinking a lot about recently. This light that I've got here is just a cheap Amazon one. The slightest gust of wind just knocks it over and smashes on the ground. That's happened probably a dozen times now. And if that bulb isn't twisted in just right, it doesn't turn on. So I'm happy that it's working for now, but I need to get a better lighting situation for out here. Because I film out here in the dark so often, I'd like to get a new faster lens for filming moments like this where because right now with this f4 canon lens 24 to 105 uh, when this when the sun goes completely down and dusk is over it's just it's just pure blackout here so i've been looking at the uh, the sigma 24 millimeter f 1.4 and uh, that can soak in some serious light and would be great for filming so let me know if you guys have used that sigma f 1.4 lens i know there's a rokinon version too but uh, I'd like to get something with that continuous autofocus for video. So that's why I'm thinking the Sigma. You know when you turn the mount on and in the hand controller, if you use it, it shows the last date that you punched in. Uh, for this rig, it was October like 28th, 2019. So that's how long it's been since I've used this thing. Just a handful of times. So while it's here on the EQ8R Pro, I'm so excited to keep using it and take some more narrow band images and uh, even building RGB images too, but with a monochrome camera. So this should be cool. I'll, uh, I'm gonna do my first loop. Why don't I do an exposure of six seconds of Thor's helmet, close the cooling aid, We're running at minus 35 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, I can see it in there. So let's see if the auto stretch improves that. Yeah, just slightly. Okay, so it looks like we're framed up nicely in there. That's the HA portion of Thor's helmet, and it's nicely centered there. So I'm going to start shooting some five minute subs on this. If you're new to off axis guiding, it's a little bit different than you may be used to with a guide scope riding on top of the telescope. This is the, the filter wheel, the big disc here, seven position filter wheel. And it's kind of a weird angle, but uh, the guide camera right here is just coming out of the filter wheel. 
the Lodestar X2 and there's a pickoff prism inside at the end of the guide camera that picks off a part of the light path coming through to the primary camera through the telescope. So it's using the primary imaging scope as the guiding telescope. So obviously you can imagine that uh, the precision from guiding through a telescope with 1100 millimeter focal length is better than one that's you know 200 millimeters, a little 50 millimeter guide scope. So it can really improve guiding and it actually makes things a lot easier not having to deal with anything like flexure and no problems with uh, running a separate telescope. So it's all one system. It's neat and compact. It really makes it easy when Starlight Express offers a package with the right spacing and it's all ready to go. So that's really nice. And as for guiding itself, it's just through PhD guiding. Uh, you see guide stars in the field of view just the way you would with, uh, with any other type of guiding. It's just running through the calibration frames now and then uh, I'll run auto guiding through PhD2 guiding. The maximum exposure length I've taken was six minutes and the stars have always been perfectly sharp every single time. So, I mean, what more can you say about a telescope mount's performance than that? I know there's people that really analyze the, the performance and, and measure uh, the tracking accuracy of a mount, but uh, for, in my experience, if I get sharp pinpoint stars in a long exposure image, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Rudy, what are you doing? <sighs> so the clouds rolled in, it's just pure cloud cover up top. But if you can see Venus, through the tree there, there's this little sucker hole gap between the clouds that maybe I can collect like 20 minutes on my target before I switch, but uh, not looking good so far. Okay, so typical, the clouds came in and kind of spoiled the fun for a little while. So I missed out on Thor's helmet because uh, it's set now. So I changed targets to M82, the galaxy, the cigar galaxy in Ursa Major. And uh, because that bright moonlight is out, as you can see, this is all, the landscape is lit by that bright moon right now. It's the only reason you can see me. The M82 galaxy is on the other side of the sky and I'm shooting in H alpha. So pretty good target selection uh, based on the conditions, but uh, you can probably see the wispy clouds are still sticking around, but I think I've got about 11 or 12 frames, five minute subs on M82, uh, which is great. I've never captured that galaxy in H alpha before, so I can add that to some existing color photos. And I'm actually really excited about that. It's about 11.30 now. Ashley's gone to bed. Rudy's gone to bed. It's just me up now. And uh, I think I'm going to hang around just in case it clears up again in the next little while and uh, either collect more on M82 or something else.